Hello viewers, Super GT here. So the challenge of this video is to try to win this race in four different cars. So it's into Lagos in group three cars. It's a race that's come up many, many times before. I can't even count how many times it's come up. So we've practiced it many times in the past, during this week as well. And we're gonna see if we can win in a range of different cars. First up, the Audi R8. So the Audi R8, when it, when it comes to this circuit, is it's the de facto beast. And it's the car that you'll see most people choosing. Very strange car to drive. It has weird handling, but once you can kind of get used to that, it flies. It basically flies around here. So first up, we are starting second, up behind another R8, which is kind of the normal thing that you'll see here. Again, most people going for that car. Most people setting their qualifying time in that car. So we're gonna see if we can go for the win first time out. So a five lap race, and the key thing really, especially if you're starting, well if you're starting not on pole position, anything below pole, the key is just to really stay in that slipstream. And we all know the magical suck zone begins at 0.8 seconds, and at the moment, just um, just over half a second behind. So we're, we're good for now. The key place really for overtaking on this whole track is into turn one, into the center S. That's where you're really gonna get most overtakes done. So coming through the final corner here, this is crucial. This is where you really have to get onto the tail of the car ahead. And we've done exactly that. He made a mistake through the final apex and we are well, less than 0.4 and now it's 0.2 or less than 0.2. You can see the slipstream working fully. He's gonna cover to the left-hand side, fair enough. And I'm just gonna try the old David Perel a switcheroo by kind of, uh, kind of lifting off a little bit. He doesn't fall for it. And almost actually could have made that around the outside. I think he might break a bit too early. And I was kind of breaking early just to kind of let him go in ahead. But actually that was possible to go around the outside on that occasion. So you can see him moving fully over to the left-hand side. He does not want me in that slipstream at all. But I'm going to follow him across. And having to break just before that 100 board, normally breaking on the 100 board, going into turn four but uh, just before when you got the slipstream and firmly in this man's wake now as um, I'm gonna try to put him under pressure as we come into the uh, mid sector here. Space opens up on the insides and he kind of half turned but then kind of turned out it looked like the space presented itself and I took the opportunity, plenty of curb and you can actually take two balls on the curb, two on the grass and it's actually defined as clean and just looking behind, on the radar at least, looks like the Dutchman in second. Now, as the Polish driver dropped down to fourth, so that's not a good lap at all. For him going down from first into fourth place. At the end of lap two, and we are seven tenths ahead. So just within slipstream range of the car behind. And just going to try to break that toe as much as possible. So the dynamic of the race really changes when you're in the lead. It's pretty much about trying to get away, trying to get out of the slipstream, trying to block the slipstream and just trying to put in, trying to hammer in some good laps. So at the same time of trying to think about the car behind, you don't want to as well. You want to just kind of focus on uh, just nailing the lap basically. And this is why I say so many times that qualifying is such an important part of racing. One, obviously to get a good grid slot, you want to start at the front, you don't want to start at the back or in the middle. But then really it's in this situation here I can just churn out consistent fast laps because I've practiced it so many times in the qualifying that's always been a solid tip that I'd always give everyone to get good uh, in qualifying basically so at this point here just stretching out that margin it's, a, it's an important lap this when they're just on the cusp of that slipstream and um, just trying to break out of it basically and once you've done that, you can really see the true pace of people. Because a lot, a lot of the time, you know, if, even if you're two attempts slower than someone, you can just stick with them if you're within the slipstream range. As soon as you're out of it, then it's game over in most occasions. So through the final corner, onto the main straight up the hill. And that gap has increased to 1.1. And that was pretty much the race sorted. By the end, it was 1.7, just kind of managed the gap and come home 
with a nice clean victory, 7 minutes 45 in the Audi R8, second to first, and we get our first win of the video. So 107 wins now actually on this game, or on this account at least. There's some on Ram Shadow as well. Okay, next up, the Porsche 911. So interestingly, on pole position this time, I was doing this during the middle of the day, and normally it's in the evening when you get all the big all the big boys turn up in the evening. So I wasn't getting so many big boys here. Um, technically I'm the big boy of this of this room, being on pole position in the 911, up against the Lexus, which is actually a very good car around here. Lexus seems to go very well on most tracks. So this isn't you know this isn't just quite easy because it's not the Audi R8, you still have to have your wits about you. The the RCF is more than capable of winning races around here. So the 911, it's, it's a good car, it's always, it's always been a very good car, but it just isn't quite as good as it was maybe a year ago. Um, of course with all the updates, physics update, uh, physics updates, Jesus Christ I can't talk, physics updates and uh, balance of performance changes etc. Um, the car is good but still, but you know, not quite where it was but still solid and reliable, still good enough to win races. Let's see if it's good enough to win a race around into Lagos. So coming through turn 12, with that turn 11 into turn 12, a very tricky corner this one and very easy to overshoot and often I do that. I kind of got my breaking point down. Again, qualifying practice, that's all, that's all you need. And as we come up the main straight, guy behind firmly in the slipstream, yellow flag I think just someone stuck on the grid oh yeah no one that guy just didn't move I think and he's firmly going to go for the move I'm going to cover the inside go fully to the left he can sweep around the outside and I was thinking that move was going to be possible it's going to be a uh, Ocon versus Verstappen almost through the centre S but he actually leaves space so that was actually good racing between the two of us we both left each other enough room and we both got through again having to cover the left hand side the inside you move to the right, leaving the car whip, and then just make sure you don't break too late. Carver the apex, don't go beyond the apex. Just park it there, and you can't quite get past. So, defensive race this one. Uh, if we can break that slipstream, that will be very helpful. But for now, it's going to be a tough assignment to win this race from here to the end under pressure. Although, normally, as long as you just defend the right kind of places, then you should be okay, and then just keep it nice and cool. With the rest of the uh, rest of the track, just always looking in that radar. Um, coming out of a corner, going into a corner where you might get overtaken, just checking that radar. Are they close enough? Will they potentially go for that move? And just if, if you think they are close enough, then you cover it off. And over time, you begin to understand how close people often go for moves, and whether or not you should. Obviously, if you don't have to, then you shouldn't. But um, sometimes it's quite hard to judge exactly when you should and when you shouldn't defend. And again, this is certainly an occasion when I should defend. So I'm going to fully to the left hand side and looking at the radar and looking behind as well. He has gone to the right hand side. He's fully committed to the right hand side. All I have to do is just hit my breaking point and hit the apex. And I should, and I should, as I do, keep the lead. So a good battle between the two of us here. Uh, lap three. So I've survived a weathered the storm for two laps three more to go not going to be very easy at all and again you can see just how much power that Lexus has with the slipstream as well downhill really being helped out good power so I cover the inside and again not much you can do uh, apart from just wait behind be patient and hope that the opportunity comes a bit later I'm just pressing for a mistake here just hoping that he makes one error and opens up a bit of a gap between the two of us and then I can Hopefully then just try to, to bolt away and run away with it. But for now, still a very tough task of trying to win the race. So through the middle sector there, gap goes up to 0.5. So he has made a bit of a mistake, but again, not enough to completely rule him out of the race win. And then here, the gap just suddenly goes up and he goes down. It just completely you know, drops down the order, uh, way out of the top eight. And uh, the gap immediately goes up to 1.3. To the Spaniard who was behind and that settled the race that was enough 
for me to win. So I got a little bit lucky because most of the time people wouldn't make a mistake like that. But on this occasion, he did. So uh, getting a 31.9 at the end there. Anything in the 31s is a good lap in most cars. And we get the second victory. So we've done the Audi R8. We've done the Porsche 911. We're going to go German once again. A bit of a German invasion. In it. Well, that, that sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Sorry. Um, okay, BMW M6. The absolute beast. This thing actually is one of my favourites now since the recent physics update. I really like it. This is my practice, so it's always good to get at least a couple of laps practice in a, in a new car. And my first lap was a, a low 32, so that's a good lap uh, to set straight away. So I was quite happy with the performance of the car. Let's see if that translates into a good race. Starting second this time up behind a Spaniard in the R8. Always difficult to beat the R8 around here. But uh, the key, really, if you're behind, just stick in the slipstream and just put the pressure on and then just press for that mistake. Eventually, you will just find an opening. And, and on this occasion, the gap opened up quite early. He didn't defend at all. And there's a tiny bump through the turn. And it turns out he's actually spun out completely. So I've gone up into the lead. No penalty, thankfully. Um, and as now, a Peugeot of all cars takes over the challenge. And after having driven this Peugeot in my recent live stream, it's actually a really good car around this track. Really easy to drive. And if you want a car that's just simple and nice to drive, I'd actually definitely recommend that Peugeot, the RCZ that the guy in second is driving. So it's kind of a situation, a similar situation to the previous race, as we have a defensive uh, a defensive race on our hands here. Very strange opening lap that, and we will look at the replay of that incident at the end of this race. Um, I'm just surprised that he didn't defend, basically, coming down that, um, coming down towards turn four, Rita Aposta. He just didn't cover the inside, and I had, I had the power, I had the speed to go for it, and I did. And normally if you show someone, at least, you know, if they're very close to overtaking and the space opens up, they'll go for it. So you need to cover it off. So again, here, covering the inside line, make sure you go to the right. You're just trying to force people to the outside always, and then just make sure you don't break, outbreak yourself. And we've managed to do that correctly into turn one. Peugeot, good down that straight. And again, coming down the Rita Aposta, are we going to be able to take the normal line? I don't think so. So I'm going to cover him off. Again, looking at that radar, gets very close. And as I said, if I'm on the outside and someone's got the run on me and you show them the inside and it's completely open, a lot of the time they'll go for it. So to be safe, just cover it off and defend well. And then through this sector, you can kind of weather the storm a little bit. Uh, this corner here, probably the place where they're most likely to go for a move as it's quite a big braking zone. And then through these ones, often not uh, this left-hander not uh, really an overtaking opportunity this right-hander yep sometimes they can definitely go for a move here but uh, he's definitely not close enough on this occasion 0.5 the gap so we're going to keep it quite easily um, 0.6 the gap now just opening up slightly dangerously towards uh, exiting the suck zone for this guy in second place so let's see if he can not uh, completely bottle the final corner I almost bottled it but you can go very wide there you can go two wheels on to that um, AstroTurf beyond the curb and still counts as clean. So he's still in the slipstream, just trying to break that toe a little bit by taking some unusual lines, but not quite enough. 32 3, that lap around there. Lap number two, not the best lap, and very wide through the first apex of turn one. That's going to put me on the back foot once again. The Peugeot is coming back for some strong attacks here. He's not going to give up at all. On this occasion, again, checking the radar, don't think he's close enough. Just have a quick check behind. Don't think he's close enough to go for the move. Down into turn four. So no need to cover off this time as we get through there. And again, it's really a case now. He's not close enough to overtake. Okay, so get your head down and just just remember your training. Remember your training, soldier. Just hammer out those laps. Hammer out those breaking points. Forget about him. If he's not close enough, forget about him. And then... Hopefully you can pull away. And on this occasion we have pulled away. Slightly. 0.5 gap. Okay, still not enough. He's still lurking. He's just not letting go. And um, we're going to have to have a race 
right to the very end. Again, taking a weird line, he's not following me completely, so he's missing out on maybe a tenth or two, or three slipstream. 32-2 that time, slight improvement. Definitely go quicker though, because we messed up turn one last time around. That's slightly better, hooked up a little bit better with the apex. Smashing the second apex, as you can. A lot of occasions around this lap, you can go two on the curve, two beyond, and that's fine. And now, finally, the gap opens up, so he messed up. And the, the center rest. And you see there, I go two tenths quicker than my PB, and oh, sorry, than my PB and versus the uh, race best. So on this occasion, we're looking, and again, still two tenths. Up, we're looking for the faster lap of the race at the end of lap number four. The gap opens up to 0.9, so he's out of the slipstream range and safely we can bring the car home. We did a 31.8 on the previous lap which is a good lap and it's going to be a third victory third race win and that was probably the least expected one given that we had a very quick car on pole position but it just surrendered that lead so quickly now let's have a look at that incident because it was kind of a funky one coming down to turn four then first lap on the brakes nice and late and well i kind of sailed a tiny bit past the apex but it looks like I was completely up the inside and he just drove into the back of me and then then just completely lost it on his own. So, I mean, there's a tiny bump there but and then he just kind of got on the throttle a little bit too much and spun himself round. But anyway, victory number 109. But now, uh, we've had enough of the German cars. Time to go British with the Aston Martin. So, I think this is, this is, this is going to be my toughest assignment yet. Starting fourth, we've got the Peugeot behind, who was quick. We're in Aston Martin, which isn't as quick as obviously the R8. And this time, there's the added problem of having two cars ahead, not just one. I think when it's one, you can kind of single them out and uh, you know just try to beat one person. It's a lot easier. But when there's two, often when you start fighting with second, first place will get away, and it makes it a lot more difficult, a lot more complications. So this is going to be the hardest one yet. As we come down to turn four, this is normally a hot spot for trouble. And on this occasion, it proves to be true as the Czech guy just nudges the Spaniard wide and we go through into the lead, checking up behind all manner of chaos. Let's have another look at that in slow-mo. So the Czech guy just kind of just runs a little bit too quickly, just nudges into the back of the Spaniard and it kind of affects him negatively as well. It affects both of them. They both lose places. The Peugeot just tries to come through a gap and gets sent only to the realm instead. And that's exactly what we want to see in our rearview mirror. Just scenes of devastation and destruction, which can hopefully give us a hand in trying to pull away from the pack. So, I mean, here, this is an important phase of the race. Just get your head down, set a good lap, try to get away as much as possible. Try to get all the work done early, basically. And if you can do that, then you've got one foot in the door of a race victory. As already, the gap has extended to over a second, 1.1 now, and that is a healthy margin to have after one lap out of the slipstream range. And no one, no one close enough to go for an overtake, and actually, uh, someone's got a penalty back there. So all scenes of devastation behind and penalties. Crossing the line, 1.2 seconds ahead, this is an important lap, let's take a look if we can just pull away here. Hooking up the apex nicely, bit of power before you get to the second apex. And they're just hooking up with this curb all the way out. I actually had to lift a, a slight bit, so this car not quite with the mid corner handling of the Audi. And again, looking behind, penalties being served, the gap opening up again, 1.8 already. Just come through turn four, clipping the apex halfway through, don't go wide with the curb. Just keep it to the left hand side here, minimise the distance travelled and then just looking for that 50 ball break just before it and then down the gear, hooked up nicely, a bit of a lift just to get the car to rotate a bit better and then on the brakes, it's hard. It's a hard braking point to dodge that one but normally as I just go out to the left, as I touch the curb then you begin to brake. Off the throttle here, bring the, right, uh, the weight to the front of the car which gets it to turn a bit better, braking at the beginning of the curb on the right hand side with this one being patient, wait, waiting for the acceleration point, going over to the right hand side, give yourself a better angle, might need a slight lift through here, breaking halfway between the end of the curb and the 50 board, and that sees you nicely into this corner, 
and then on the power nice and early use the curve if you have to and that's a good lap in the Aston Martin the gap about the same but ultimately at the end of the race the gap at 2.1 just increased a slight bit doing a 31.9 in that race so the car on a, on a par basically with the BMW with the Porsche and almost with the Audi and having a look at my total race times you can see they're 745, 746, 746, 746 so all very consistent within one second basically between all four cars and there we go race win number four of the video race win 110 overall bit of gloating in this video but um it's always nice to sometimes actually win for once and just a big thank you to all my subscribers viewers patreon backers members and just anyone who just enjoys the videos thank you so much for being part of it i shall see you next time thanks for watching goodbye